Hi there, Eric Backer from New Zealand. Thank you for coming back. This must be video number 1250 something. I don't know. We've done a few of them now. I always appreciate you looking at my videos. It's what makes me want to keep making them. So thanks for your kind comments out there. I've got a question here from a subscriber. How do I make my stomach lining stronger? So here's a, a couple of tips for you. Seven good tips on how to make that lining pretty tough. All right? If you follow these seven tips, you're going to get a pretty good, strong stomach. Right? If you've got a stomach problem already, if you follow these tips and persist with it over a period of time, the stomach will get better and better and better. Now remember that a strong stomach and an effective stomach will make the digestion really, really good. So it will allow the pancreas to properly do its job and to you know, continue on breaking foods down and allow your body to more rapidly absorb them. So a good stomach is going to give you more energy, more vitality, it's just going to improve your whole life. So let's just kick off. The first one is an anti-inflammatory diet. So there's no point in eating foods that inflame the gut if you want to have you know, a strong, healthy gut, especially lining up the gut. And what do you think the top food is that affects the stomach? It's alcohol. We've talked so much about alcohol, haven't we? So it doesn't matter whether it's bourbon or beer or scotch or whiskey or whatever you drink, it's all the same. It's alcohol. Alcohol is the most powerful thing in the stomach. The worst possible time to drink alcohol for, as far as the stomach is concerned, is on an empty stomach, right? Because it will inflame the stomach. It will cause problems there. An anti-inflammatory diet also means you take usually red meat out like cow meat. Fish with omega-3, it tends to be have more of an anti-inflammatory property than red meat. But maybe you even want to go to the extent like I do is take a lot of meats like down in the diet and just have a bit of fish, a bit of free range chicken and predominantly eat a lot of legumes and beans and peas and seeds and nuts and berries. There are so many healthy foods you can eat out there that are anti-inflammatory. Berries especially, you know, brassicas, asparagus, tomatoes, all these foods are anti-inflammatory. You know, don't jump on the bandwagon and send me a nasty comment saying, wrong, wrong. Tomatoes are acid forming, they're inflammatory. Well, in fact, they're not. The lycopene in tomatoes is anti-inflammatory. I think I did a whole video on nightshades and trying to debunk that dumb myth that tomatoes are bad for arthritis and crap like that. You know, this is all, all hearsay, basically. So, anti-inflammatory diet basically means you're going to, you know, be good friends with the greengrocer probably more so than the butcher, right? Now, point number two, garlic and ginger are great additions to the diet if you want a, you know, anti-inflammatory diet. I always encourage people that I see to eat more garlic, more ginger, and also more fresh herbs like rosemary, oregano, thyme, basil, parsley. All of these can go in the cooking. They all have antimicrobial properties and anti-inflammatory properties to some extent especially garlic and ginger, great to put fresh into your diet. When I make a lentil dish up, I put a large amount of fresh garlic and fresh ginger chopped up in with the lentil dish. It's beautiful. Point number three, probiotics. Always try and have some type of food on a regular basis, which is had, you have that probiotic nature about it, a fermented or cultured food, okay? That could be a kimchi for you, or it could be yogurt, it could be a, a sauerkraut. And as I mentioned in previous videos, Always test the waters first. Take small amounts. If it plays up on your gut, take it out until your gut can handle these kind of foods, all right? Point number four, the biggest one, I think, out of the whole of these seven is stress. Stress has a way to wreck the gut. It's unseen. No one talks about it. I'm one of the few people on YouTube that really push this agenda all the time about stress. Believe me, people, stress really mucks up digestive health bad. When you're in that fight or flight, even low-grade long-term, it has this great ability to slowly undermine your stomach health by ensuring that blood supply is not switched off to the stomach, but it's diverted away to other areas of attention, like legs, like arms, like your head, parts of the body that need to act promptly when stress occurs. And the stomach doesn't need to act promptly when stress occurs. It's the last cab off the rank. It's right down the back, okay? Or today we say the last Uber off the rank, I suppose. So it's well down the back, okay? So if stress is a factor in your life and you have got a stomach problem, 
my recommendation is to try and get the stress sorted and the stomach should improve. All right? The fifth one we've discussed already, less red meat. Steak especially is not a good food if you've got a stomach problem. Cow meat, beef, all this kind of stuff, pork, fatty meat, pepperoni, bacon, salami, all this kind of junk. This is not a good idea for an inflamed gut. Or if you want to, you know, if you want to not get into that realm of having an inflammatory problem in your digestive system is pull these kind of meats out of your diet. Number six, snacking is a no-no because many people snack on the wrong kind of foods. If you're eating three good meals a day, um, it's better that way. If you've got a digestive problem, I prefer you don't snack on foods. And if you do snack on foods, try and snack on a bit of yogurt or something like that, okay? or half an avocado. It's a lot better than snacking on a beer or a Mars bar <clears throat> or some chewing gum or a scoop of ice cream or a cookie, you know, or something like that. The seventh one, try to avoid pharmaceutical drugs. Many pharmaceutical medications mess up the gut. Many of them, especially antibiotics. So these really need to be taken out of the diet as much as possible. When you're on medications long term, you're going to get a lot of health problems. I've talked so much about this on this channel already. I'm not a fan of pharmaceutical medications, unless absolutely necessary, which is a rarity for most people. Right? Think about it. Thanks for the question.